quick one. Earthquake. Earthquake. Oh my god, it's this. The ground beneath Tokyo started shaking at exactly 11.15 p.m., but what happened next would send shockwaves across an entire nation. Right now, as millions of Japanese citizens are rushing to higher ground, a massive 7.6 magnitude earthquake has just unleashed something far more terrifying than the tremors themselves. The clock is ticking, and for those living along Japan's northern coastline, every second could mean the difference between life and death. Just moments after the earthquake struck, Tsunami warning sirens began wailing across multiple prefectures. The epicenter, located approximately 70 kilometers off Japan's eastern coast, has triggered what authorities are calling one of the most urgent evacuation orders in recent memory. Three-meter-high walls of water are racing toward the shore, and residents have mere minutes to escape. This isn't just another earthquake story, this is a race against time unfolding in real time. In Tokyo, hundreds of miles from the epicenter, the earthquake lasted an unusually long time. When earthquakes persist for extended periods in Japan, locals know it signals something significant. The chandelier footage emerging from various buildings shows violent swaying that continued for what felt like an eternity to those experiencing it. But the real danger wasn't in the shaking, it was in what the earthquake had set in motion beneath the ocean's surface. The Japan Meteorological Agency immediately issued tsunami warnings for Hokkaido, Japan's northernmost prefecture, along with neighboring regions including Aomori. A magnitude 7.5 earthquake hit northern Japan today. Japan's meteorological agency is reporting a powerful earthquake off the country's northern coast. These areas sit dangerously close to where the earthquake originated, making them the most vulnerable to the incoming tsunami waves. The warning system, refined through decades of experience with natural disasters, gave residents a precious but limited window to react. What makes this situation particularly critical is the depth at which the earthquake occurred. At 53 kilometers below the ocean floor, roughly 33 miles deep, the seismic event had enough power to displace massive amounts of water while still maintaining devastating surface impact. When tectonic plates shift underwater at this scale, they create what scientists call a displacement event, essentially pushing water upward with tremendous force. The physics behind tsunami formation reveals why these waves are so deadly. Unlike regular ocean waves that only affect the water's surface, tsunamis involve the entire water column from seafloor to surface. As this displaced water races toward shore, it transforms from a barely noticeable rise in sea level to a catastrophic wall of destruction. The shallower waters near the coast compress this energy, causing the wave to grow dramatically in height. Initial reports from monitoring stations along the coast have begun trickling in, showing the first tsunami waves reaching approximately half a meter in height. While this falls below the predicted 3-meter maximum, authorities stress that tsunamis arrive in multiple surges, with later waves often proving more destructive than the first. A 7.6 magnitude earthquake has struck off Japan's northeastern coast. A powerful earthquake has struck in northern Japan off the coast of Aomori, triggering waves up to 70 centimeters. The real test is still coming. For residents in the warning zones, evacuation protocols kicked in immediately. Japanese households maintain emergency go bags containing water, non perishable food, heat packs, and other survival essentials. These preparations, drilled into the population through regular disaster preparedness training, are now being put to the ultimate test. 
families grabbed their bags and fled inland, knowing they had perhaps 15 to 20 minutes before the first waves arrived. The geographical layout of northern Japan creates particular challenges for tsunami evacuation. Coastal communities often sit in narrow strips between the ocean and mountainous terrain, limiting escape routes. Evacuation centers positioned on higher ground quickly filled with residents seeking safety, while emergency broadcasts continued updating the public with critical information. What distinguishes this event from typical earthquakes is the dual threat residents face. Not only must they contend with potential structural damage from the initial quake and inevitable aftershocks, but they must also outrun an incoming wall of water. This combination creates a uniquely dangerous scenario where split-second decisions carry life-or-death consequences. The comparison to previous disasters, particularly the 2011 Fukushima earthquake and tsunami, weighs heavily on everyone's minds. That catastrophe demonstrated how quickly situations can escalate when earthquakes trigger tsunamis near populated areas. While the Fukushima region currently sits under a less severe advisory warning for this event, the memories of that disaster inform every evacuation decision being made tonight. Emergency response teams across Japan have mobilized, with search and rescue units preparing for potential casualties. Hospitals in affected areas have activated disaster protocols, clearing space for potential victims while ensuring their own facilities remain operational. The Japanese self-defense forces stand ready to deploy at a moment's notice their disaster response capabilities honed through years of similar emergencies. The tsunami warning system represents decades of technological advancement and painful lessons learned from past disasters. Seismic sensors scattered across the ocean floor detect the slightest movements, feeding data to supercomputers that calculate wave heights and arrival times within seconds. This technology, combined with an educated population that understands the gravity of tsunami warnings, forms Japan's primary defense against these natural disasters. As minutes tick by, the situation continues evolving. Early reports suggest that while the initial waves haven't reached their maximum predicted height, the danger is far from over. Tsunamis typically arrive as a series of surges, sometimes spread across hours. The first wave rarely represents the largest threat, and emergency officials stress that residents must remain at evacuation sites until given the all-clear. The earthquake's timing striking just before midnight added another layer of complexity to the evacuation efforts. Darkness hampers visibility, making navigation more difficult for those fleeing to higher ground. Emergency lighting systems at evacuation routes and centers become critical infrastructure, guiding residents to safety through the night. Social media platforms have transformed into real-time information networks, with residents sharing updates, checking on loved ones, and spreading official warnings. While these platforms provide valuable communication channels during disasters, authorities also battle misinformation that can spread just as quickly as legitimate updates. The economic implications of this event will unfold over coming days and weeks. Japan's position as a global economic powerhouse means that significant disasters can ripple through international markets. Factories may shut down, supply chains could face disruption, and the cost of rebuilding will strain resources. However, Japan's experience with natural disasters has created robust continuity plans that help minimize long-term impacts. Looking at the broader geological context, Japan sits along the Pacific Ring of Fire where multiple tectonic plates meet and create one of the most seismically active regions on Earth. The specific mechanics of tonight's earthquake involve the Pacific Plate subducting beneath the North American Plate, a process that builds tremendous pressure over time before releasing it in sudden, violent movements. The human stories emerging from this disaster paint a picture of both fear and resilience. Families huddled in evacuation centers share food and blankets with strangers. Elderly residents who've lived through multiple disasters offer calm reassurance to younger generations experiencing their first major tsunami warning. These moments of human connection amid crisis demonstrate the strength of community bonds forged through shared vulnerability. As dawn approaches Japan, the full extent of this disaster will become clearer. Aerial surveys will reveal any coastal damage, while ground teams assess structural integrity of buildings affected by the earthquake. 
The coming hours remain critical as aftershocks continue rattling the region and tsunami waves potentially still approach the shore. The international community watches closely, ready to offer assistance if needed. Japan's advanced disaster response capabilities mean they rarely require external help, but the global nature of modern catastrophes ensures that support stands ready. Neighboring countries have also issued their own coastal advisories, understanding that tsunamis respect no national boundaries. This event serves as a stark reminder of nature's power and humanity's vulnerability. Despite all our technological advances and preparation strategies, we remain at the mercy of geological forces far beyond our control. The best we can do is prepare, respond quickly, and support each other through the aftermath. For those in affected areas, the night is far from over. Evacuation centers will remain active until authorities confirm the tsunami threat has passed. Aftershocks will continue for days or even weeks, each one a nerve-wracking reminder of the initial quake. The psychological impact of such events often outlasts the physical damage, requiring long-term community support and mental health resources. The story unfolding in Japan tonight demonstrates both the terrifying power of natural disasters and the remarkable preparedness of a nation that has learned to live with constant seismic threat. Every earthquake, every tsunami, adds to the collective knowledge that helps save lives in future events. Tonight's disaster, while devastating, will provide valuable data and experience that strengthen Japan's already formidable disaster response systems. As rescue teams prepare for daylight operations and families wait anxiously for news of loved ones, the world holds its breath. The immediate danger may pass, but the recovery process is just beginning. Communities will rebuild, lessons will be learned, and life will eventually return to normal, until the next time the Earth reminds us of its unstoppable power. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.